Hi guys, Chris Thody here from XRF. Uh, we're here at Coffee and Crawlers with Deseret. Thanks to the guys, Tim and the guys here, for inviting us down for the show. A uh, little bit about XRF. XRF was founded about 30 years ago by my dad, John Thody. Um, he was uh, the GM for Dana up in Canada for through the 80s. Kind of saw the whole industry maybe going down a little bit in terms of quality and just wanted to go out there and build a better part. So we started across Canada, we in Canada for 30 years, opened up a warehouse in Michigan about 20 years ago, and we just opened up our DC down here in Phoenix last year. And uh, thanks to Deseret for taking on one of, being one of the first companies to take on our product down here in the Southwest. Because of our heritage in the servicing oil and gas service companies, logging companies, we've really been embraced by the four-wheel drive community since we moved to, the, to Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, companies like Pink Jeep Tours, they run, operate 70 Jeeps up, up in Sedona. They were getting six months to a set of ball joints. We've been in their vehicles now for over a year. No sign of wear or any deterioration. Uh, we sponsored the Holmes Racing Team. Uh, they've won the Baja 1000 the last five years in a row. On this ball joint right here, off the shelf ball joint. Just want to show you a little bit about our JK ball joints. Uh, we learned a lot from, our, from the Dodge pickup trucks about ball joints. That they've had a real problem with them. So our K7460 ball joint, number one seller uh, for the Dodges, is built exactly the same way as most of the Jeep ball joints. So more, li more like a kingpin than a ball joint. So it moves up and down like this. The problem that they've had with them, on the OE design, OE doesn't have these bearings top and bottom like this. And, and this kingpin basically, it gets torqued inside the housing and as it moves up and down, it wears out the, the body of the housing. So what we've done to solve that problem is we've installed these FX 2005, just a fancy name for a high carbon bearing, top and bottom within here. And now the ball joint rides up and down on these bearings instead of on the housing wall. And people are quadrupling the amount of miles they're getting on these ball joints now. So what we do is we start with a solid steel forged housing and we use SAE 1045 steel to build that housing. That's a, a mid carbon steel, about 0.40% carbon. It's about the most amount of carbon you want to put in the ball joint be before it starts to become too brittle. So what we do, solid steel forged housing, and then we install an acetel bearing on the inside of the ball joint. There's a bunch of different types of nylon. We found acetel is the best for this application. It does not expand or contract with hot or cold, does not expand or contract with heat, or with, sorry, with oil, gas, water. Um, it's burnishable, so we can polish it just like steel, and it's almost as strong as steel. It also allows for very reduced friction within the parts, so the ball stick can move quite freely inside here, but with zero amount of lateral movement up or down or sideways. Um, on these Dana 60 axles, which this one will sit on, as soon as you allow any kind of movement in there, this ball stud is not long for the world. Let me explain to you the, explain to you the difference between these uh, few different ball joints. Uh, this is one of our competitors' ball joints. So, not a solid steel forged housing. They've, I'm not sure how they've engineered it, but they've kind of scarfed in a bunch of different pieces of metal inside here. This is a metal on metal style, which um, some people prefer. We've tested out this type of this version, we found that the acetel bearing is still a stronger way to make a ball stud. Um, we just can't imagine how you can make a perfectly engineered part with this many pieces of metal tied in here and then and put together this way. So that's one way the competitors make it. The other thing you'll notice on this one is they've cut the grease grooves into the ball stud itself. We don't feel that's the better way to build it. If you imagine like etching a piece of glass. If you etch the glass and you push on that piece of glass, it's going to break where the etching is. If you etch the ball stud, it just reduces the strength of the ball stud. What we do is we, we allow the grease inside this acetel bearing. We've got grease grooves. It's hard to see in here, but we've got grease grooves cut inside the bearing and the grease flows through the bearing. With this acetel bearing, you almost don't even need grease, but we make them greasable. All of our ball studs are going to be greasable just because people like to grease. Another way that people make them is more of a spring-loaded version like this. But this actually builds movement into the ball stud. If you put enough pressure on here, this ball stud will move up and down. Again, we feel that's not the best way to build it because you're allowing, you're building movement into the part, which eventually is going to cause it to wear out. Our ball joints are here, available at Desert Rat, and uh, we enjoyed the show, Tim. Thanks for having us, and enjoy the weekend.